Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to get started with the italki platform. I hope my video today will help answer some of your questions, minimize that fear you might have about getting started, and motivate you to sign up and take your first lesson. I personally really like working with italki tutors because I have found it's really helpful to have some sort of teacher working with you during your language learning journey. It's a great source of feedback because your teacher will be able to quickly tell you if you're pronouncing something incorrectly. You have a native person who can immediately fix your mistakes. It will naturally help your ability to speak more clearly and to be understood by native speakers. I personally find italki tutors can exponentially speed up the language learning process and really keep you on track. Also, this video is just focused on italki because that's what I personally use, but you can also use a lot of the tips and advice that I'm going to give you guys to work with other platforms or if you're looking for a tutor offline as well. So before you get started with italki or any sort of language learning tutor, you first want to get very clear on what your goals are for going into this process and for choosing a tutor. So if you're a total beginner, you might want to focus on a comprehensive class that's going to focus on vocabulary, grammar, speaking, listening, writing, and kind of everything all at once. Or you might really want to focus on one of your weaker areas. Let's say that you are struggling particularly with speaking. You might just want to find a tutor who can help you improve your speaking. Or you might want a tutor who can check your writing and help you improve your ability to write or express yourself in the language. Also, some of you might be preparing for language exams or for citizenship tests, and you might have very specific things that you need to work on in the language in order to better prepare yourself for those kinds of exams. So once you have an idea of what exactly you want to focus on, try to think about what kind of classes would serve that goal well. So once you're clear on what your goals are and you have an idea of what kind of classes you would be interested in, the next step is to identify some tutors who would be a good fit for you. So what I do to get started narrowing down all the options is I filter by people who are native speakers of my target language. There are a lot of people in italki who might be teaching a language that they're not native in and I personally choose to just skip those teachers. Then I'll also take into account if I'm learning a language that's spoken in many locations. For example, if you're learning Spanish, there are many countries in the world where people can speak Spanish. But maybe you want to learn Spanish because you plan to move to Spain one day. Then in your case, you might want to filter by native Spanish speakers who are from Spain. That way you'll be able to learn Spanish in the context of Spain rather than somewhere else that might use the language differently or have a different pronunciation or even have a different culture. Then I filter by budget because I only wanna be looking at tutors that I can actually afford. If you allow yourself to look at a whole surplus of tutors, even those with that are outside of your budget, you might get enticed because you might find a tutor who has everything you want, the best tutor, the best classes. You're just so excited, like, oh, this person's gonna be great. And then you look at the price and you're like, Huh, this is a lot more than I was planning to spend, but mm, you know, they're so, they're gonna be so worth it. Maybe, mm, maybe I should just do it. And the problem is if you book a tutor that's outside of your financial means or they're really like pushing you to your limits, then it's gonna be a burden on you later, especially if any sort of unexpected finances creep up on you. It's gonna suddenly become a source of stress or you might just suddenly have to take a break for your lesson. So just be very honest with yourself what your budget is. If, if it's very cheap, there's nothing wrong with that. You can easily find a good tutor within any budget range that you're working with. The last filter that I'm going to use is I'm also going to filter by professional tutor. Professional tutors actually have to submit some sort of documentation that they have some experience in education or teaching their language to non-native speakers. Once I narrow it down by these three filters, I'll just go through one by one. I'll watch their introduction video. And when I'm watching this video, I'll pay attention to how they speak in their native language. I want to make sure that I can clearly understand what they're saying and that their way of speaking including their dialect are both clear and easy to understand. Also in the self-introduction video you get to know a little bit about their personal interests sometimes and you can see through their professional experience what areas of language learning they focus on. But in my case at one point I was looking for someone who could help me prepare to apply for jobs in Korea, who could help me work on my resume, my cover letter, and all of this like business world context materials for Korean. And at that time, I found a language tutor who had been teaching Korean for several years who also worked in marketing. 
So I thought this tutor would be a great fit for me because they could help me improve my business Korean and they have real world experience so they know exactly what's being used and they would have more insight into what I should actually be writing, what kinds of words I should use, etc, etc. So sometimes the teacher's personal background could be a really good asset for you. So try to pay attention to some of the experiences that they have and that they list in their video. Once you've booked your first italki lesson ever, you might be wondering, how do I get prepared for this first class? What should I expect? Is there anything that I should prepare? My first recommendation to you is actually before you book the trial lesson, send a message to the tutor that you would like to book the lesson with. Some tutors have other duties outside of italki, so you want to make sure that they are actually aware that you are booking that lesson and that they are actually available at that time. Also, I'm not sure if other people do this, but I personally have been doing this since I got started on italki. And as someone that has worked as a language tutor in the past, I think it's really helpful for the italki tutor if you send them a message explaining what you're looking for in the class. Because if you think about it, the tutor doesn't really know you. They don't know why you're signing up for their class. They don't really know anything about you, what your goals are at all. And they have to show up and prepare to teach you, not knowing what they should teach you. And then in turn, I feel like your first lesson and your first impression of this tutor is going to be much more fair and just overall better because they were able to come to the lesson with some idea of what you were expecting and it gives them a chance to try to kind of prepare to meet you in the middle. And then of course, you're going to want to make sure that you've downloaded the appropriate software for the lesson. So when your first class comes around, you're not trying to download it at the last minute and you're not late to your class because you forgot to. So on the day of your first lesson, I recommend, especially if you're really anxious about getting started, logging into whatever that platform is 30 minutes to an hour in advance and just leaving it up ready to go on your computer so you know the software is working, your computer is working, you're totally ready to just click a button and get started. And then of course, lay out some notebook paper and a pen or pencil on your desk or wherever you're going to take the class and then walk away. Watch TV, read a book and do something relaxing so that you're a little bit more calm when you do come back and sit down. I recommend coming back to your desk with just maybe three, two, three minutes before it starts. So that way you're not sitting there fidgeting at your desk really overthinking things before it gets started. You're kind of just walking in, waving the screensaver away, and then a minute or two, the teacher will start the call, and there you go. Once your first lesson is over, and you've taken a moment to be like, oh, yeah, I did it, then now comes the time where you should think and reflect on the tutor and the class that you just had and whether or not you liked it. Essentially just think about overall like how well you liked the tutor, how well you liked the class. Do you think the tutor has a clear idea of what you want to work on in the future? There are some things that can easily be communicated and changed. At this point I recommend in that first trial lesson or afterwards through a message, communicating about those things and giving it at least one more try before you make a final decision. But if you don't feel like the class was what you wanted and you don't really think it's going to change, and then just go through this process one more time with another tutor and maybe after one to two tries you should be able to land on someone you like. Then essentially if you really liked the tutor, you really liked the class, I personally recommend booking a second class right away so that you are committed to showing up for another class and your tutor also has time to adequately prepare for another class for you. And then if your tutor gave you homework, I know a lot of us will do the homework at the last minute and then be scrambling to literally get it done in time for the lesson to start. So don't be like me, do your homework early. Also, if you don't want homework, communicate that to your tutor, I'm not sure. If some of you guys are anti-homework or you like homework. No, actually, that's a good question. Do you like homework as a language learner? Yes or no? Please comment below because I'm actually really curious about that. This is essentially my process for booking an italki tutor, but naturally I have some tips for you guys as well. So the first thing that I really, really, really want to emphasize is don't stick with a bad tutor or a tutor that just doesn't work for you because you feel bad. 
just let them go. You can send them a nice message on italki and say, thank you so much for your lesson. I really enjoyed working with you. You are so kind and well prepared, but I've decided to go in a different direction and try out another tutor. Thank you for your time. It's okay. It's part of this person's job to get students who come and go. It's normal. It's not going to break their heart. They will be okay. Just just get the tutor that you need. It's your education. Another tip I have, I mentioned earlier in this video, but I just want to emphasize it one more time, is always filter by your budget because you don't want to look at all of these beautiful tutor options that you can't afford. And then to find yourself scrambling to make it work, thinking, oh, you know, if I don't get coffee like ever and I only meet my friends like once a month, maybe I can afford this tutor. Just don't look at the options you can't afford. Just don't look at them. Out of sight, out of mind. So another tip I have for those of you who are very shy or like anxious and uncomfortable about getting started with italki and this tip is something that i kind of mentioned earlier in this video but again i'm going to emphasize it again here is that you should just set up early for the class so that you know you are totally ready to go and then walk away do something you enjoy for leisure and then i recommend showing up and actually sitting down at such a last minute just because you don't want to be there like right on the dot because they might call you and you could miss it but then when you are showing up for the class you're minimizing the chance of yourself rethinking those fears and worries and you're just kind of forced to just go for it right away without thinking and then of course if you find it uncomfortable to get started it's just going to be uncomfortable to get started i mean that's just how it is i promise you that if you just keep going with it a few more times after a while it's going to become a familiar experience for you especially if you're working with someone multiple times and you get used to that particular person then my next tip is after you finish your lesson go back and review the lesson that you had with your italki tutor and then make sure that you do your homework in a timely fashion so that you're prepared for the next lesson and that's essentially how i go about choosing an italki tutor i wish you luck in your first lessons and i'll see you in the next video